In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. Okay, today's Chaplain Report, it comes from the book of Daniel. For those of you who may remember, we've been going through a series on Daniel. And to, to just give a quick recap, you may recall that what just happened is that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego have been elevated to the position of advisors. And because of that, the Chaldeans who were looked over for that position are very upset with them. They keep trying to one-up them. And so one of the things that they do in this is that Nebuchadnezzar has issued this order that everybody has to bow down and worship this idol that he has made when he plays the music. And because Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego worship the true God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the law of Moses very clearly states that you shall have no other gods before me, you shall worship no graven image. When time comes to worship, they don't worship. And so because of that, the king comes back to them and he likes them and he favors them. And he says, so look, if you guys, you just go ahead and worship now. We'll just forget this whole thing. And then we see their reaction here in the book of Daniel in chapter three, verses 16 through 18. Whoop. In se- Sorry, wrong graphic there. So uh, Daniel three sixteen through 18, where he says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to the king, O King Nebuchadnezzar, We do not need to give you an answer concerning this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the furnace of blazing fire, and he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. But even if he does not, let it be known to you, O king, that we are not going to serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. Wow. I mean, you talk about some moral conviction and courage. You want to know what faith looks like? That's it right there. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, looking at the most powerful man on earth at the time, the person who is the ruler over the Babylonian Empire, and saying, we don't serve your gods. We serve our God, and we're not going to serve anybody else's. And if that means you throw us into the furnace... That means you throw us into the furnace. You see, this is what's so astounding about this, because they say afterward, even we believe that God can deliver us, but even if he doesn't, we are not going to obey your gods because our God teaches us that that's not right. Man, that is a level of faith that I aspire to get to that even when they are faced with the prospect of death, that they look this guy in the eye and say, we're not going to do it. Our God teaches us that that's wrong. And even if he doesn't deliver us, even if he doesn't protect us, then we're still not going to worship your gods. See, this is the difference in somebody that is in it for obedience and somebody that is in it for self-interest. There's unfortunately a movement out there amongst some in the Christian community that they basically think of God as a giant vending machine, that if they just get the right combination of things that they need to do with the vending machine, of course, that would be insert the right amount of money and then make your selection and press what you want and God just gives you what you want. That's not how God works. They believe that God can save them. They believe that God will save them. They say that our God is perfectly capable of delivering us out of your hands. But whether he does or not really isn't contingent upon our obedience. God may save us. God may not save us. But whether or not we get something out of this, we're going to do the right thing. Obedience is just that important to us. That when they're faced with the option of you being killed and burned alive in a furnace... And obeying God, they say, yeah, we we choose to obey God. That's the option that we feel is better. That takes an incredible amount of faith. They're saying whether we get anything out of it or not, that's really immaterial. We're going to do what God said to do. 
we're going to do the right thing because it is the right thing to do and because that is what our God instructs us to do. And this is something that I'm sure the king was pretty stunned at because nobody dies for a pagan god. I mean, they just don't. The king basically reflects that sentiment where he says, what god can deliver you out of my hand? In other words, he's saying that there's not a god that exists that is more powerful than me. They have no more ability to protect you than I do to take your life. And that's what Nebuchadnezzar, even though he's a pagan that does worship God, uh, pagan gods, that's what he believes. And so he believes that he is stronger than any of the pagan gods out there, that he has more powerful power than they do. And these three men from Israel are saying, no, our God's more powerful than you are. Sorry, you're wrong about that. And if we have to choose between looking out for our own skin and obeying our God, we're going to pick obeying our God every single time. Because he is the one true powerful God, and that is what we're supposed to do as those who serve him. And Lewis observed in this particular, uh, in, in one of his books called The Screwtape Letters, and you have to remember, Lewis is writing from the perspective of an older demon teaching a younger demon how to tempt. So when he says this, he's saying it as though he were a demon instructing a younger demon. And this is not a exact quote, this is a paraphrase, but he essentially says that our position is never in more danger than when a soul feels abandoned and has no reason to believe that they will be cared for or rewarded and obeys anyway. So even when you're at your lowest and you feel like God is not there, he's not looking out for you, he's not going to protect you, and you still obey anyway because you believe it's the right thing to do and you believe that God is supposed to be Lord over your life and that his advice for you is better than anything you could come up with on your own, that is where the demons are terrified. At that point, they've pretty much lost you. And they know that. And that's why Lewis asserts it the way that he does in the screw tape letters. Because if, you, as a Christian, you reach the spiritual maturity to say, look, whether I get anything out of this or not, whether or not God actually protects me, even when you feel as though God has completely abandoned you, like, by the way, Jesus did on the cross, you still say, but obedience is important enough that it doesn't matter. Obeying God and doing what my father asked me to do is more important than what I get out of it. Even if it feels like he's not there for me and he's not looking out for me and he's abandoned me, I still choose to, to obey God. See, that's the difference in somebody that adheres to a prosperity gospel and somebody that cares about actually doing what the Lord and creator of this universe instructed us to do. It really is an amazing thing that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were able to do this. And you have to commend their faith and respect it. It's the kind of faith that every single one of us should have. And by the way, it is also the way that Jesus instructed us. This is the way that we're supposed to live. In fact, he said the way that we're going to be able to distinguish those that are actually of his flock and those that aren't, those that are going to be saved and those that are not, he said that it is not those who are going to say to me, Lord, Lord, but those who do the will of my Father. That's the one that's going to be saved. That's the one that's going to be entering into the kingdom of heaven. And so this is the calling that we are given to as well. That we as Christians, whether you're talking about a Jew living back in ancient Babylon, being a foreigner in a foreign land, or a Christian who is a citizen of the kingdom of heaven, living in this foreign land of this earth, we are called to be obedient no matter where we are or what we're threatened with. Because to God, obedience is just that important, and it's what it, he calls us to do. Stay the course, friends. <laughs>